child of God, if you're a Christian, born again, tongue talking, demon chasing, but a believing child of God, today's conversation is for you. I want to stir us up. I want to get us really thinking about this relationship we have with Christ and if we're living to the fullness of the benefits of this relationship. So let's get right into today's video. Hello everyone, my name is Oluwa Toing or Oluwa Fumidara. And you're welcome back to another conversation here on TY's Thoughts. And like I said at the beginning, this is a very specific conversation for those of us who say that we are children of God. And I'm just going to give a background to why I want to talk about this today. I'm sure you've seen the topic. Do you really know the benefits of your salvation in Christ? Do you really know? Now, I had gone somewhere with a couple of people a couple of weeks back. And when we got there, we had to spend the night. Now, these people, a room had been prepared for them to also spend the night uh, where we went to. And, you know, I just took it for granted that they had been informed that they had a room and they slept in their room and were fine. So by the next day, when we were then going back to our destination, to our natural habitat, um, you know, conversations just brought... In fact, what had happened was I noticed there were a lot of mosquitoes flying in the car. Now, I live in Lagos, Nigeria. Africa, we have a lot of mosquitoes everywhere. And I was wondering that why are there so many mosquitoes in the car? And yes, I like to kill mosquitoes because I just do not like mosquitoes. So every time that I killed the mosquito, I think I'd killed two and I just noticed a lot of blood. And I was thinking, how come these mosquitoes are so bloody? <laughs> you know, meaning whose blood were they sucking? <laughs> okay, let me be serious. So one conversation led to the other. So by the time I had killed two. You know the thing about mosquitoes sometimes is when you have them in your space, you might think it's just one flying. Then you kill that one, and the next thing you see another one, and you're like, ah, you mean there were two? Then you kill the second one. Then you see a third one. So at some point, I think I just blurted out, what's going on? Why are there so many mosquitoes in this place? And, you know, one of the persons in the car then said, oh, that they had to sleep in the car overnight. So maybe that was when the mosquitoes came in because they had to leave the doors open and leave the boot open and this, that. And I literally freeze and I'm like, why did you have to sleep in the car? But a room had been prepared for you. In fact, the host specifically mentioned to me that, oh, they are sorted, right? Because by the time we had to go out of the place and come back to where we're going to sleep, that at the time that we went out, they had put together a room for them. They had sorted the room, laid the bed, swept the room, made everything, you know, good. So when my host told me that, I just assumed that, you know, that message had also been fed to them. And so I said, but a room was prepared for you. Why didn't you sleep in the room? And, you know, the person says, oh, they didn't know that a room was prepared for them. That, in fact, it wasn't until that morning, the next morning, uh, that one of the persons in the house who was, didn't spend the night in the house had gone and c come back, then told them that, oh, did you guys uh, sleep in the room that was prepared for you? And they're like, nobody told them a room was prepared for them. And at that point, I was a tad upset, you know, but I mean, it had happened, it had happened. They slept in the car, unfortunately. In fact, one of them was now joking to say, once we get back, they have to take a certain drug because of all the mosquitoes that <laughs> must have beaten them. I mean, it's funny, but it's not funny. But when I then paused, and even as well on that journey, and I was just thinking about it, it made me then ask myself the question, Tony, how many things has God prepared for you that you are not aware of? And because of that, you are living below standard. You are shortchanging yourself. He has prepared a room, but then you are sleeping in a car on the outside. Mosquitoes are biting you. So use that to look at different scenarios in life. That there are so many benefits to our salvation in Christ Jesus. And many times as children of God, we are tongue-talking, we are Bible-believing, we are confessing, we are praying. But might it be due to a lack of knowledge? You know, it says in the book of Hosea chapter 4 verses 6 that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And this thing about knowledge is just so powerful. And knowledge is not just 
the fact that you know that, oh, it is written for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, or you know that he has said that uh, you should pro uh, you prosper because your soul prospers, or you know that he has said that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That is surface. There are different levels of knowledge. I'm reminded now of that scripture. I think it's in Proverbs chapter 24. Um, I think so, but I'll quote it here. And it says, by wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. And by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious things. And so when I thought about that conversation with them, and it's just been on my mind since that day, I've been a bit, um, not scared, but just like, God, what might I be missing out of? Because I do not know, I do not have a full grasp, I do not have an understanding of the things that you have prepared for me, of the things that my salvation has given me the benefit of, and the devil is shortchanging me. I myself might be self-sabotaging myself because even if you had issues, whether it's self-esteem, whether it's depression, whether it's abuse, you know, be different things that happen in your background, in your childhood or in your life experiences. What is meant to happen when we come into Christ Jesus and when we begin that journey of knowing him and becoming like him and understanding him is that all of those things, they don't just pale, they are eradicated, they are gone. God says, I have a new identity for you. He says, you know what? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It is one thing to know that on the surface. I know that this is what the word of God says. But it is another thing to really understand that and to know what it means how it applies, how it should change me, how it should change how I step out into the world, how it should change how I relate with family, in my career, in my business, how I should relate with my body, with my health. If you're told that there's something wrong with you, how should you respond to that? How should you go about life? How should you speak about yourself? How should you speak about the environment and the changing circumstances, whether they are socioeconomic, you know, different things. Everything that we do and everything that we are is meant to be dictated by this new person that we are in Christ Jesus so that we're not just going about life the same normal way, thinking the same way, being the same way, having everyday normal conversations. And meanwhile, God is looking at us and thinking, I have so much more for you. Why are we not knowing it? I sense that it's because we're not pressing in. We're not pressing in enough because you know what? The level to know this knowledge is not just at the surface. Now, it was interesting when I had this concern with these people. I then said, oh, they, now in, in the house, it was just myself and my host and one other person. And I figured what had happened was that that one other person, you know, three of us slept in the house uh, minus these other people, had thought that they had been informed by the person that then eventually told them in the morning. Unfortunately, if this other person had spent the night in the house with them, they would have been informed, right? This person did not inform them on time and informed them too late. I mean, it made me realize that we have the Holy Spirit and he's never a late informer. In fact, God is described as a very present or ever present help in time of need. And even when we are not in need, God is speaking faster than many of us are even able to contemplate, than many of us are even staying sensitive to. And because we are so distracted by many things of the world, we're so pulled in many directions, we're torn here, you're torn there. You wake up in the morning, you can't even have a good quality time. I'm not talking about quantity right now, because sometimes you can feel that you have prayed in tongues for two hours. And maybe half of that time, your mind was already in, what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do this day, oh, my child's going, oh, make, make breakfast, oh. Quantity is as important as quality. How many of us can truly say, I shut out one hour for God? And in this one hour, I wasn't just present in body, but I was present in mind. I was alert, whether I were worshiping, whether I were reading your Bible, whether I were praying, your mind, your heart, everything was fully in the zone and you were just seeking to hear what God was saying. Let us ask ourselves that question.
In fact, someone gave a very interesting analytics. I think it was Pastor um, Olubi. Yes, it was Pastor Olubi at one of the conferences we had just had at the Covenant Nation. And he said, we have 24 hours. And he said, you should also tithe 10% of your 24 hours to God. So are you giving God a quality tithe of the daily hours allocated to us? Quality, once again, guys, because we can say that we do it, but how qualitative is it? And why am I saying these things? Because if we are not allowing ourselves to be fully present in this faith that we say that we are living or that we say that we chose, because after all is said and done, our faith is a choice. Nobody forced you. That is the beauty of the salvation of Christ. You were not forced. And if you were forced, unforce yourself to get to a point where you are here willingly and cheerfully, right? Salvation is a free gift. But not only salvation. Salvation or the day that you officially give your life to Christ is just the first step in this walk with God. Now, there are many other things that then begin to unfold from there. How do you pick up your cross daily? It's in our daily habits. It's in our daily actions. There's a scripture in, I think it's Hosea chapter 6, maybe verses 3. It says, press on to know the Lord. Press on to know the Lord. You know, after Paul had done so many amazing things that he had done, he still says, I press on. <laughs> if Paul is pressing on, please, brothers and sisters, this was a man with so much revelation and understanding and knowledge, still saying, I press press on and he was one that prayed that prayer he says that God will grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him if you look at a lot of Paul's prayers they are prayers to know the Lord or to know the will of God that prayer was in the book of Ephesians if you look at the prayer in the book of Colossians as well is seeking to know God more that we may know your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding that every single day there must be a pressing on to know God can never be, we cannot finish knowing him. You know, some of us have this see finish attitude or see finish mentality with God, especially people that have been Christians for a long time. Maybe you got born again in, maybe for some secondary school, maybe for some university, maybe for some even from your parents' house when you were a child and you've known God for 15, 20, 25 years. There's a tendency to easily fall into the motions and to assume that, yeah, you know it, you know the way, confess here, yeah, one hour tongues there, you know, sing here, yeah, pray here, yeah, you know. It's, it's almost become like a formula. God can never be a formula. He's always saying, come higher, come up higher, lean into me deeper. There's so much more that I have for you. Yes, you've manifested greatness in the last one year, in the last two years, there is greater. Or yes, you've even been in the valley in the last one year, in the last two years, in the life, last five years. Let me show you what I have prepared for you. Let me show you a new way that Joseph would never have known or imagined that one day he will wake up as a prisoner and by the night of that day, he's sleeping as the prime minister that one day he woke up in tattered prison clothes and by the night of that day his garment had been totally changed the greatest of Joseph's desires greatest of his desires was just that let me get released from this prison and be taken back to my father's house that was that was his vision it, it couldn't get any bigger than that I mean, it was in a land where he didn't belong anyways, the people that he didn't belong with anyways. So he wasn't even looking to manifest any greatness in that land. But in the process of giving himself to what were his dire, painful, crazy circumstances, right? And I believe in that process as well, it was also getting deeper in the knowledge of God and in the knowledge of himself. It happened that until the time came, when God said, yes, now is the time. And there's actually also a scripture like that in the book of Psalms. I think it's Psalm 105, if I'm correct. You know, it says, until the time came, God said, now it's time to unleash Joseph. And God did exceedingly, abundantly, above all he could ask or think. Because that is God. So who are we to limit God? Or who are we to limit what we think is our knowledge of God? How we believe that it works? God can never be limited God is so much more and it is we will be doing ourselves a disservice if we have 
put our Christian faith or our Christianity to our relationship to formulas or to patterns or to this just the way. It's just that four to five prayer. After that, I'm done. Then maybe just once in a while of the word. Then maybe just myself in church on Sunday. We're living below, way below the standards. And we're going to be like these people who were in an environment where a beautiful room had been prepared. But yet they were sleeping with mosquitoes in the car. Who sucked them? <laughs> who sucked their blood? And beat them seriously. And that is how life is draining from some of us, draining from us, taking from us daily because we are not aware. We do not know. And he's saying, I am here. I am ever present. He said, Jesus said, let me go so that the Holy Spirit will come. He will teach you all things. He will bring to your remembrance all things. What you need per time, per season. What you'd heard at 2 p.m. in the afternoon might not be what you need to hear at 6 p.m. in the evening because the times are constantly changing. And that is why we cannot box God and say, oh, I've already prayed this way. He has already spoken this way. I've already heard this way. He has already moved this way. So I know how God works. What? His knowledge is unsearchable. That's the same reason you can say you read John chapter 5 today and you read that same John chapter 5 tomorrow and you see things that you never saw yesterday and you're wondering, is this not the same John chapter 5 that I read? Because God is amazing. So brothers and sisters in Christ, might we be shortchanging ourselves? Might we be allowing the enemy or life or even self to be depleting us because we are not pressing on daily to know the Lord. I did this video to challenge us. I'm challenging me as I'm speaking as well because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not living to the greatest of my, of even just, let us not even talk spiritual ability now, of even latent ability or potential that I know that I have. How much more that that I'd not even know. Mm, you get what I'm saying? Let us press on. And whatever press on is for you, we have to do the work. It is work. It is sacrifice. It is stretching. It is denying ourselves. It is carrying up our cross. It is following Jesus daily. It is sometimes turning off the TV. Bible and chill. Don't Netflix and chill. Worship and chill. Don't this and chill. You get what I'm saying? It is all of those things. It is not pleasing to the flesh because the way of the flesh and the way of the spirits, they are like this. They go in two different directions. But it also always then boils down to a choice. And the choices that are, we are making determine the greatness of the life of Christ that we will experience and manifest on the earth. It takes a choice every day to say, I choose the way of the Lord. And that song is an old time song. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. And that is a prayer we should pray daily. First, the grace to choose the way of the Lord. It takes grace. And then to actually make the choices when you meet situation after situation. And it's not always bad situations. It's sometimes good situations. You know, and God is saying, live the good, choose the God. Mm. That's another video I'm going to do, good, good versus God. But that's a conversation for another day. I just want to leave us with this thought. If you feel or if you know that you are not living up to the fullest of the benefits of the life in Christ Jesus. And you're wondering what is going on. It's never God. He's there. He's constant. He's waiting. He's speaking. He's waiting. It's always us. And to look into our lives and to make the necessary adjustments every day. The adjustment you made yesterday is not enough for today. Yesterday's gone. Today I believe. <laughs> Holy Ghost fire. Breathe on me. Every day is a new day to get up and say, God way, God you, God choices, God mandate, and to press on to know the Lord. And may God help each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this. Uh, I hope you were stared. <laughs> no, provoked, provoked, provoked is the word. I don't want you to be stared. I want you to be provoked. See, the enemy is raging and things are happening and 
at the end of the day, we'll come to find sometimes too late that there was nobody to blame, not even Satan. Many times we give him the, 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 not even the authority, we give him the allowance to do things that he should never have tried. So let us get up, let us get up. Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give us life. As always, I would like to hear from us. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this video and you believe that there are people that need to learn from it or listen to it. Share, subscribe, like the video, and until the next one, stay connected to God. God bless you. Bye.